What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing a beer from the Firestone Walker Brewing Company, and they're out of Paso Robles, California, and this is their Firestone 23, which is their 23rd anniversary ale. So this is basically a blended barrel age American strong ale. It comes in 11.5% alcohol by volume, no IBUs listed time of review. This bottle is approximately 10 months old. So Last year, I believe it was in April of 2019, I reviewed the uh, 22, which is their 22nd anniversary ale, and that had about six months of age on it, and it was one of my favorite beers of 2019. I gave it a five out of five. It was delicious. Every single anniversary ale I've had from them have been, at the very, at the very least, good. And most of them are delicious, great, just fucking world-class beers. So every year I try to buy the anniversary ale. Now, I bought this one. Um, I think it was late last year, earlier this year, and uh, I had planned to review this one in April again with six months of age, but had some personal slash medical issues and whatnot, and beer got put on the back burner, and a lot of beer sent to me courtesy of uh, viewers of the channel and breweries and whatnot. Uh, that got pushed to the forefront. This one got pushed to the, the you know, on the back burner. So this one has 10 months of age instead of six, but um, I'm still going to review it, and I still think it's going to be delicious. So uh, I'm going to read a little bit here. So Forewarning, if you want to fast forward to the actual review, you probably fast forward a good three, four minutes, I would say, because I'm going to read the back of this, and then they have a whole sheet that uh, tells you about the blend and everything. So if you don't care about that, then just fast forward to the review. So on the back of the box here, it says, in the fall of 2006, brewmaster Matt Bernaldson asked a handful of his winemaker friends for their input on blending a, diver a diverse stash of barrel-aged strong ales. Together, they came up with 10 a trailblazing beer commemorating our 10th anniversary. And so began an annual autumn rite that now continues with our 23rd year. And the 24th one should be coming out uh, this upcoming fall. It says, at the advent of the recent harvest season here in Paso Robles, Matt and his brewing team once again convened with their friends in the local winemaking community. These winemakers are practicing experts in the art of blending. And they came to help us assemble a harmonious beer uh, from among seven barrel aged component ales. As always, they broke into teams in a spirited competition ensued to create the winning blend, which you now hold in your hand. The result is uh, 23, a beer of immense depth, complexity, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to tasting notes. It says, enjoy the spirit in our cellar in a cool, a dark place between 45 and 50, allowed to warm up in the glass when serving. So yeah, this is um, definitely around 55, 60. We should be fine now. In here, they have the blend, the final blend. So what I'll do is I'll put this box back over to where it was, and then we will uh, we will get into that, so... It's awesome. They have a whole sheet here. tells you about the blend. So let's go with what they have going on here. So the blend this year is 28% uh, of their Sticky Monkey Asian Burn Barrels. It is a round and full-bodied quad brewed with Belgian candy sugar and Mexican brown sugar. Another 28% is their Parabola, which I've reviewed on the channel before, um, aged in bourbon barrels, uh, you know, massive amounts of roast barley, hopped with steering golding and how to a tradition. Uh, you got, you know, Parabola over here, so... That's in here. Then they have 20% of Bravo aged in burn barrels. It's a deep brown slash strong ale and lean. Or it says deep brown slash strong and lean imperial brown ale hopped with Bravo and Hella Tour tradition. 15% uh, is burn barrel aged uh, Heldorado aged in burn barrels. Um, that is a blonde barley wine. Uh, Velvet Merkin is 5%. It's a uh, milk stout aged in burn barrels, 9%. I didn't mention Sticky Monkeys, 10.4%, Parabola, 14.4%, Bravo, 11.5%, Bourbon Barrel Age, Helorado, 11.5%, Velvet Merkin, like I said, 9 And the last is their Tequila Barrel Age, Helorado, 11.9%, um, Asian Tequila Barrels, only 4% used in here. So the vast majority of the makeup of this beer is basically Sticky Monkey, Parabola, and Bravo, and I like all three of them. Um, you know, Sticky Monkey, Parabola are fantastic, so let's throw this off camera. Whatever, not a big deal. Uh, let's crack this one open, see what we got going on. I'm really excited about this one, as I am all their anniversary beers. Hopefully it's fucking delicious. I think it's going to be. We will see. Throw it over here. And uh, yeah, let's give it a pour. Hashtag proper class. We've got the barrel works from Firestone Walker, one of my favorite classes. Oh, that's a little bit lighter than I anticipated, even though it's a blend. Like, it's pouring out like a dark brown. We're going to go like that so I can get my schnaz in there. Got to get your schnaz in there. Put it over here like this and, uh, yeah, looking good. I don't, I don't know, presentation, whatever. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, so in the glass, that's like pitch black. But when I was pouring it, I'm, I was like basically brown, like a slightly darker brown. Has about a half finger of this um, tan colored head. Very creamy looking. Looks fantastic. Let's get a nose. <sighs> Fucking dynamite. Every single time it's dynamite. The one thing I like about this is it's so, I mean, it's a blend, but 
this beer has a lot of depth and complexity, but like what I get is a lot of times just like caramelized sugars. Like there's brown sugar, there's molasses, there's caramel, there's toffee. It's just so heavy on the caramelized sugars. You're getting barrel aged. I'm getting more bourbon than anything else. There's oak, there's vanilla. Underlying like cocoa kind of presence to it. Dark fruits. Oh man, dark fruits right there. Cherry, raisins, dates, plums, things of that nature. <sighs> Little bit of alcohol, 11.5%. You, I don't think you're gonna get past it, but it's not boozy, but it's definitely letting you know, hey, it's a big beer. This is an anniversary beer. That's 11.5%. <sighs> it smells so fucking good, holy shit. <sighs> yeah, I can't get much else, but it, like 10 different notes, but... Fucking super complex. And I just could sit here and huff on this all day. It's fucking delicious. Let's get into it. Cheers to everybody. I like spoilers. This is going to be tasty. End of story. Cheers. Every fucking time. They, it's just, it's glorious. I don't think I've ever had an anniversary beer that was like super fresh, like say under a month old or anything. Most of my drink have some age on them and let them sit down, mellow out the booze a little bit, let them blend together a little bit more. It's fucking phenomenal. This is a phenomenal beer. Body, lower side of full, low, low to medium full. It's not super viscous, but it's big. It lets you know, hey, this is a 10 plus percent beer. I'm fine with it. Good friend of mine. Fellow beer tuber Paul over at PA Brew News might say this is thin because he says that for like 98% of the beers he drinks. But I could see somebody saying, hey, this is a bit thin, but it's still fucking big. It's a big, it's not thick, but it has a decent viscosity to it. Mouthfeel, they let you know there's carbonation, but it has a soft, smoothie, soft, smooth, creamy vibe. Body and mouthfeel are, are great. Maybe not fantastic, but they're great. The taste. It's a fucking Firestone Walker anniversary beer. Like, it's 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 absolutely divine. I'm getting more of like a, a, a nice grape con component, like a like a like a dark grape component at the forefront. That the, the fruits in this one, like the dark fruits are really heavy. Grape, plum, date, sweet cherry. That hits me at the forefront. Then right after that, that's where that caramelized sugar comes in. Brown sugar, toffee, caramel. Like in that order, just hits me. Passes through, you start getting the barrel aged components. They, you know, the tequila barrel aged, El Dorado, the bourbon barrel aged, everything. There's vanilla, there's oak, there's an oak tannin presence that hits you like at the back of the middle of the palate. Like, so like 75% through the oak tannin kind of hits, hits you. And that carries on through the, through the finish. And on the finish, you're left with a semi dry oak tannin kind of finish, a slight bittering component, but it definitely leans a little bit more sweet, but I think there's enough dryness and a little bit of bitterness to break up the monotony of the sweetness. Yeah, now next time I went in for that one, big roasted malt kind of presence. Not really coffee. I'm not getting any coffee, but like roasted malt, sweet cocoa, chocolate. I would say the sweet chocolate is kind of an underlying character in this one. Um, all this caramelized sugars and like the dark fruits, that, that's definitely the predominant um, the predominant notes of this beer, but it has an underlying like sweet cocoa, like roasted malt kind of sensation to it. That this is way more heavy on the dark fruits than I anticipated. Um, last year's, I don't remember being that heavy on the dark fruits, although I could go back and just look at my review. Did that one live, I think it was like a 40 minute review, but um, yeah, this is just. You know, it says 2019 Vintage. Like I said, they released this in the fall of every year. Um, I picked this one up. I think it was late 2019. And again, I was going to review it in the spring kind of to keep consistent with the one I did last year. I wanted to do six months of age. But with 10 months of age, if you have a bottle or two of this or whatever, open it. I think this is drinking extremely well. It's not as good as the 22. I think that I gave that a five out of five. I'm not going to give this one a five out of five. But I will say it's another fucking incredible anniversary period. You know, so many places, so many breweries nowadays, when they do an anniversary beer, uh, beer they'll just, you know, I don't think as much thought and uh, consideration goes into their anniversary beers as Firestone Walker does. I mean, the fact they get local winemakers and they team together and then they do, um, you know, they actually 
you know, do a blend and they break into teams and they do blind beer tastings. And then the winning um, team actually gets their blend as the anniversary. Like, that's crazy to me. And that's fucking fantastic. Cool to see. Yeah, not much more to say about this one. 11.5% um, on the palate. I'd guess this around like 10. Highs the alcohol relatively well. Not really a lot of it. I know it's a bigger beer based on the tasting notes, the body, the mouthfeel, everything. I would guess, you know, blind at least 10%. But there isn't any astringency on the palate as far as the alcohol is concerned. Again, this is almost a year old, so you're talking about a beer that's kind of had a time to mellow out. But I do get some kind of chest warming in the stomach and whatnot. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, rating on Firestone 23, their 23rd anniversary ale. Uh, high 4.75 out of 5. I'm going to go, f you know what? Actually, I'm going to go 4.75 out of 5. Just straight 4.75 out of 5. It's fucking delicious. I can't give it a 5 out of 5. I think the body, I would like a little bit more in, the, in terms of the body. And the flavor profile isn't as good as last year's. I gave last year's a 5 out of 5. This is not as good as the 22nd, in my opinion. Some people might be like, that's way better than the 22nd. Whatever. We all have different palates, right? But for me, this isn't as good as what I was tasting last year, but it's damn close. So 4.75 out of 5. I don't really need to sit here and break it. It's a fucking awesome beer. Price and availability. I think I paid $9.99 for this beer. I think most of the um, boxed beers now from Forest and Walker, certainly the Parabola, Sukaba, Parabola, Sukaba, this beer, and a couple others, usually in my area are like $9.99 for uh, the 12 ounce bottle. I like that they moved to the 12 ounce format. They used to come in the 22 ounce bottles, which I used to have behind me on the pretentious wall of bottles and cans. I like that they moved to the smaller format because I'm able to drink this in a sitting. With the big bottles, I usually save them for shares or hanging out with friends because 22 ounces of a, you know, 12, 13% beer, 11.5% beer, too much for one person to handle unless, I mean, you're built like that. Again, we'll go to the aforementioned Paul. He'll session. This is a session beer for a lot of people. For me, though, like I drink one bottle of this and I'm good. Um, so I'm glad they moved to the smaller format. And with the small format, obviously the cheaper price. Now it's almost a dollar an ounce. But the other, like the Parabola, when it used to come in the 22 ounce bottles, I know in like California and other markets, it would be anywhere between like 12 to $18. Here they would show up, it'd be $20 at the very least. Some places could charge you $25. So the fact that I can pick this up for $10 and try out the beer and not have to drink 22 ounce of it, fantastic. So I like the smaller format. Most of the beers like this come in, you know, $10 a, uh, a bottle. So I'm okay with that. You know, the whole packaging, everything goes into it. The, um, it, it's just, the presentation is fantastic from these beers. Uh, Availability, wherever you get Firestone Walker, we get them here in the Western New York area all the time. So um, if you get Firestone Walker in your area, you probably saw this one last year and you'll probably see 24 this year. So uh, if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. If you've had it fresh, you had it with age on it, whatever the case may be, let me know. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say it's one of my favorite anniversary L's from them. But uh, last year's was better for me, but only by a little bit. This one's still fucking delicious. And I'm going to crush the rest of this off camera. By crush, I mean probably sit and, you know, sip on it for another half an hour. But uh, yeah, awesome. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by. To the next one. Cheers.